before I even thought about going trackside, work came up first, early in the AM hours. I snagged this BNSF vehicle train around 0530 in Aurora, Missouri, with BNSF 6837 at the lead. I was able to get a quick shot of it on my iPhone as they came into town. Later in the day, on the other side of Springfield, a BNSF northbound manifest freight train passes by at the maximum authorized speed through CP South Sergeant on the Thayer North subdivision. Heading back towards Springfield, I stopped at Mountain Grove, where I ran into this southbound loaded coal train with quite the engine consist. BNSF SD70 ACE 9037 was doing the honors heading south.
I finally had the rest of the day free to explore the Springfield, Missouri area. Springfield Yard was only a 10 minute drive from my hotel. I decided to start there and see where the trains would take me. Your best view is right off the Kansas Expressway overpass. The yard isn't as big as I thought it was, but it's still a decent size. I noticed while driving alongside the yard on Division Street, a westbound Q train was fixing to depart. The Eldon Avenue grade crossing would be the closest I could get to the tracks, right at CP Nichols, located on the very west end of the yard. This marks the start of the Cherokee subdivision. CP Nichols is also the junction to turn north for the Fort Scott subdivision to Kansas City. We'll venture towards that direction later on. BNSF 8371 West eventually came towards my location, but slowed to a stop just before the crossing. They had a mix of power from Norfolk Southern in the consist, and S9973, a Dash 944 CW GE locomotive. They were stopped because of an eastbound that was lined into the yard first coming from Tulsa. A lunar signal was lit for them at Nichols, restricting, proceed at restricted speed. When Springfield Yard was ready for them, they were on the move to swap out at the yard office. Approach medium signal was now lit for BNSF 8371 West. That means proceed prepared to pass the next signal, not exceeding 40 miles an hour, and be prepared to enter diverging route at prescribed speed. They still couldn't go anywhere just yet though, since the S train was still in the block at Nichols. Now with the S train clear, the journey for the Q train gets underway as they head west. Their signal got upgraded to a clear indication at this point.
Back at Eldon Avenue on the other side of Nichols, a clear signal was lit for northbound to enter the Fort Scott subdivision. This would be for BNSF 7467 leading an H-series train. More trains were starting to line up for departure out of Springfield. There was one spot though I wanted to check out on the other side of the yard, keeping in mind I was probably going to get drenched in the rain pretty soon. I looked up online some places to check out around Springfield and came across the Jefferson Avenue footbridge going over the tracks. But of course, as I predicted, it was closed off to the public due to structure issues. Hard to believe this bridge has been here for over 100 years. So, it was back to Eldon Avenue I go, making it just in time for this interesting low ram work train.
I have never seen anything like this before. They came to a stop just past the North Meteor Avenue grade crossing. I'm not sure what kind of move they were doing, but I didn't want to sit and wait, so I moved locations to explore some new territory. I barely made it to Brookline to catch this eastbound vehicle train moving at the maximum authorized speed led by BNSF 6837. I stuck around Brookline to see if I could catch another train in this glorious evening light. It only took an hour of wait time before BNSF 3827 East leading this Q train rounded the curve. chased BNSF 3827 East back into Springfield. They were stopped when I arrived, but as I pulled up to the crossing, Springfield Yard was ready for them to come in.
All right, three south side of down. Uh, you might let the next crew know water and crew back. A clear signal was lined for a westbound train out of the yard. 20 minutes pass, and here came BNSF 4283 West leading an S-series train heading towards Tulsa.
the sun was fixing to set during the last peaks of daylight. I moved over to the Fort Scott subdivision side as this northbound BNSF B-series train heads for Kansas City. A B train would be classified as an empty bear table train. I was just fixing to move locations until I saw that a southbound train on the Fort Scott subdivision was heading this way. I tried to get back to my previous location, but the crossing was already activated as they slowly pass milepost 197, but the horn caught me by surprise. NSF 4125 leading this loaded Herzog ballast train had probably one of the best sounding RS3K horns I've ever heard. These horns aren't too common to hear on a class 1 railroad nowadays. They were going slow enough for me to leapfrog over to the next crossing to get them again. Why not hear that horn one more time, just for good measure, 
here at CP Nichols. NSF definitely put on a capper with that horn to end my day, as well as a perfect Midwestern sunset. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to enable that notification bell as well for all up-to-date content. Also, leave a comment down below to let me know what you think. Until next time, so long from Springfield, Missouri, at C.P. Nichols, along the BNSF Cherokee Subdivision. <laughs>